watching from from the outside, it was probably the best Olympics I've I've, I've seen. You know, and I, I'm not just being biased because I'm from London. I just think it was it, it, it was massive. You know, I think you know all the Londoners they, they came together. Not even just London, the whole country came yeah. together. Um, the open ceremony was awesome. The closing ceremony was awesome. We saw world records. We saw Olympic records. We saw top performances from from the British athletes and. Um, I think people, they, you, you do want to see how fast a human body can go, but you want to see how fast a human body can go legally without the, the help of, 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 of drugs or, or things like that because, you know, it's, it is cheating and, you know, I think you, you need to protect. You, you need to protect the guys that aren't taking the drugs, whereas you don't, okay, you, you, don't, you don't want the guys taking the drugs in the sport, but you need to protect the guys that aren't taking, ain't taking the drugs. I think, you know, I think there's still quite a few years behind okay. that, but I, I do think, you know, within 10 years, we could be seeing, you know, the, 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 the Paralympics, you know, turning out quicker times and quick performances in the sprints, the jumps, just based on the advances of technology. In, another, in other countries, if you're not running sub-10, you ain't making your team. Mm. Or you, you know, you're not getting the coverage, you're not getting the sponsors because you know, you've got five, six guys running nine, eight, nine, seven, five, six in front of you, whereas over here, you, you run 10-1, 10, 10-0, 10, you know, you, you get a bit of money in your pocket, yeah. you, you make the team, and I, I think it's just, you need a bigger influx of, of sprinters running 10-0s, 10-1s. Nines, and you, you will start seeing the performances going up. Once I think once a guy, an, an athlete comes and he, he runs sub ten in this country, you'll see a lot of other, you'll see a lot more guys running sub ten because you know everybody, Cut. yeah, oh yeah, all these pushes coming up. I was really focused that day, and you know it's just I was I was in the lane next to him, and he, you know I was in the block, and I was kind of looking across at him, and I was like. Focus, focus. The gun went, and I could just remember me looking across, looking across, looking across, and then he just started moving forward. And I was, it felt like I wasn't in the race. It felt like I was, you know, the spectators. I was sitting at home watching this guy just, you know, he broke the 150 meter world record that that day. I knew he was going to beat me. You, you know, you know, I just, I, I knew it was just one of them. them it was just literally turning up to run race for second, third, and fourth. You know. It, Good experience, and I think the more you, you race him, the easier it will become to compete against. Um, it, it, it's it's the, the injuries cleared up, the muscles still a bit weak, so I've been rehabbing it. Uh, lots of lots of stuff in, in the gym. You know, I've, I've, I've seems like I've been doing more rehab over the past four years than I have actually been doing track sessions. It's it's hard, it's boring, but you know, it's light at the end of the tunnel. I need to get my body fit. Um, there's a World Championships next year, there's a European Indoor Championships next year as well. Um, you know, there's two things I'm, I'm aiming for. I would like to make the team in both individually. So, you know, I'm just kind of just using this year to get my body, my body right and next year just kind of hit it hard again. Yeah. I don't think I could, I could leave it behind. It's just, you know, I've, all my, my, my most, you know, proudest moments and my best memories come from athletes. You know, if it is coaching or, or mentoring an athlete or, you know, having something to do with athletes, I'll definitely, definitely be doing it. I mean, you know, I, I, you know, I've I, I, I was been on and off coaching a young girl, 12 year old girl for, for a couple of, couple of seasons now. Mm -hmm. You know, when you see people progressing and you think, I've helped them do that. You know, you are really proud. It's like you're, you're nurturing something. Yeah. And, you know, that's something I can see myself doing once I, once I, you know, hang up a spot. So his name's Adam Jamili, um, 10.05.2036. I think he's got a massive, massive, massive future. I mean, I've, 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 I've seen him train, I've seen him compete, and, you know, I don't think there's any limits to what he can achieve either. Mm. He's, a, he's a young guy, I don't want, I don't want to put too much pressure on him, and, and, and you know, being in this country, that's bound to happen anyway. I think he just needs to keep his head on his shoulders and focus on what he needs to do and I think he will finally you know, be seeing a lot more of him. I 
I get a lot of people contact me on, on, on Facebook asking me about training and stuff like that. I, I try and you know get back to them. If not that day, I, I always try to reply to people, um, Twitter, Facebook. I'm on both. You know, if people want to want to contact me and then ask for any advice. You know, at what, how did I get that? Things like that. Then you know, feel free. I always reply, and you know, I'm always always willing to help because when I when I was getting into athletics, you know, a lot of the older athletes um, helped me, so I, I don't mind you know lending a helping hand. Watch out for me in the next few seasons, that's all, I'll, I'll be back. Take care. This is Ricky Fifton and you're watching Double Take Debates.